footballer in the world. He's never out of the wars, and he's still not out of the wars, but I'm very fond of him, and I know that he has a terrific number of fans all over Ireland. Welcome, Georgie Best. Golly, are you ever out of the wars? Oh, wasn't like that bad on Wogan, was it, for oh, heaven's sake? I kissed you Bar Sharif. You what? We you got engaged know. after that. Did you? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Couldn't get engaged to a nicer guy. <laughs> Lovely fella. <laughs> Lovely fella. Well, how do, what do you feel about all that fuss now? Uh, it was just, I mean, uh, I think it's helped him a little bit. I, uh, <laughs> uh, I regret it a little bit, yeah. I, was, uh, I think I stepped over the line slightly. But... Uh, <clears throat> I don't regret it. I don't regret too much I've done in my life. And I don't regret that too much. No. Did they tank you up before you went down? They, well, it, it depends what you call tanking up. They give me about 20 bottles of champagne, so I suppose that's, that's tanking it, up. That, you know, that would do it That's right pretty up. close yeah, to yeah, it. Yeah. yeah, come off it. Stop, 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 <laughs> stop sending up Mr. Wogan. Well, what, what, what do you, what's your reaction, George? They keep on saying to you that you've wasted your life and you should catch on to yourself and all of that. What's your reaction to that? Well, I just figure that people who keep saying that are people who haven't had a life. Uh, I'm in a nice position. I don't have to work from nine to five in the morning. Uh, and they get up and they've got to go through a full day. They get paid very little money. I don't. Uh, I enjoy my life. I enjoy nice things. Uh, you know, all the boring things like fast cars and women and gambling and <laughs> booze and all the stuff that, uh, that's really boring. Uh, I just enjoy myself and it just seems to me they're sort of pretty jealous. So I, I just let them get on with it, let them say what they want and, uh, mm. and still enjoy myself. Do you think you're an alcoholic? I don't think I am, I am. You are? Yeah. <laughs> you are? Yeah. I love it. And, and, and seriously, are we talking serious now? Yes, yes, yes. we are. Yeah, yeah. It's a problem. It's been there for a long, long time. Uh, I don't hide it. I'm not ashamed of it. I'm, I'm not proud of it. Uh, but it's just something that's there, and uh, I mean, I speak honestly about it. Yeah. And not so much for myself, but if if it helps even one other person, then I'm doing some good. And and did did you ever try to do something about it, like uh, Alcoholics Anonymous or whatever? I tried everything. Yeah. The, the first time I went to Alcoholics Anonymous, uh, I took a drink with me, <laughs> and I shared it with a friend of mine, and we went out and got drunk. Afterwards. Afterwards, yeah, after the meeting, yeah. So it was a complete waste of time. And yeah. what, what happened? How can, I, how can I be anonymous? How can you exactly, yeah, but what happened at the meeting? You're supposed to stand up and say, I'm Georgie Best, I'm an alcoholic. I stood up and I said, my name's George Best, I'm an alcoholic, and they all said, yeah, we know. <laughs> <laughs> and then what happened? And then what happened? Then what happened? <laughs> then what happened? No, I, seriously, I did. Yeah. I, I went to a few meetings. I've got lots of friends who have the same problem. They, they went to AA, it worked for them, yes. uh, and it's worked for thousands of people. Yeah. Uh, it didn't work for me, so yeah. you know I tried lots of other things which didn't work. Uh, and I keep looking for something that'll work. So far, I haven't found anything. You tell, that it, the book is a great read. It's a great read, and Thank a, you. a lot of, of, of your voice comes through to me in the book. Um, but but you, uh, I didn't realise you're under such pressure, all, or you feel that you're under such pressure from people all the time. No matter what you do, you get into trouble. Mm. Yeah, uh, I mean, I honestly believe, I don't think, well, I know I'm not a troublemaker. I go out, if I want to go for a drink, I go in my, my local pub, restaurant, bar, whatever you want to call it, and I sit in a corner, I don't bother anybody, I sit and have a drink, but I guarantee you, Within 20 minutes, there's always one that comes up and wants to fight me. That, I'll get you later, Dan, all right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, which I shouldn't have to go through. I mean, I shouldn't have to suffer that. You know, I haven't played first division football since 1972. And I still get people want to fight me. Oh, why, George? What is it about you that... I don't know why. I don't know why. It's like, it's like anybody. They, they, they wanted to fight Muhammad Ali because he was the world champion. There's always someone who thinks he's better than you. 
Well, I can imagine people thinking that they're better than you at fighting, but you play football, so why don't they get a ball and go out and show you, show you that they're better than you playing football? I don't know, cause maybe they want to show their friends that they're, they're, I don't know, Jack the Lad, the superstar, they want to show off. And yeah. I mean, the guy I'm, I'm being, being a nice, quiet Irishman, I don't like fighting, <laughs> Indeed, you know yeah. that. But the guy who hit you on the head with the beer mug just for, for nothing, you just went in to get it. Yeah, that's, well, that's just one. I mean, there's been, there's been hundreds. One guy came in and, and smashed my skull, he nearly killed me with, with a pint pot. And uh, because I nearly killed him back, I got in trouble, because he's the first person to go to the police, because yeah. you know, I fight back. I'm a typical Irishman, I won't stand back and take any rubbish from anybody. Yeah. Especially um, Terry Wogan. Yeah, especially Terry Wogan. <laughs> well, you're quite right not to take any nonsense from him. Alton, how about... <laughs> hey, just, just while you... Do you remember that photograph? I'll put it up there. Oh, George is called. It date. I don't know when it dates from. Do you remember that? You, you broke a guy's leg, apparently. Playing, playing a match, obviously. Well, I'm good at that. Yeah. <laughs> George Vess is booked by referee John Homewood after a foul on Lynn Pardo, who was carried off with a broken leg. Mm. Yeah, in my career, I, uh, it was a very unfortunate incident. I did it twice in my career. I broke two players' legs. And both times, I felt like walking off because I was so sick that I'd hurt a fellow professional, because yeah. I've never ever gone out uh, on the field or off the field to hurt anybody mm. uh, on purpose. Uh, and that was the first one. I did it again a couple of years later, uh, and I was absolutely sick. I went to the hospital after I did that, and he shook hands with me and said it was an accident. But of course, the same thing, you see, the press pick it up, and they say I did it on purpose, and I could have, and I, I didn't, never ever in my, in my life have I ever tried to hurt anybody? But there were an awful lot of guys trying to break your leg. Oh, well, they tried, yeah, but uh, I, I'm Irish and too quick for them. Listen, let's let's uh, remind you of uh, of George at his best in his heyday. We're going to show you some of his celebrated goals. Well, a few of his celebrated goals. There were an awful lot of them. And the first goal that you're going to see was your sixth goal against Northampton Town in the FA Cup. He scored six goals in one match. And the first of these goals that you're going to see is the is the sixth of those roll it there Roshin, please this is a, this is some beautiful beautiful football of this guy in full belt best here's the record there it is george best brian kidd to george best fitzpatrick best going in on it best oh beautifully taken by best Shot taking over, best breaking, and in a great position to break too. This looks bad. What a great goal, George Best. Morgan trailing outside him on the right. Doesn't need to use him. Has to try to set it up for Best. Oh yes, indeed. <laughs> George Best setting it up for a shot. Here it comes! Oh, goal! George Best! Sadler is up there at the near post. Good back header. And Best! Tommy Taylor's header. George Best! Kirkpatrick has given the corner and it's been taken. George Best. Sold two dummies and now has made a chance for himself. He's had trick! have an even better piece than that. You have known a great number of women in your time. Women, what do you have to say <laughs> to this man? Well, I was wondering uh, about, about the press and yourself. I mean, mm -hmm. I've met you uh, socially yeah, in yeah, London yeah. when you had the restaurant. Uh, we used to go there sometimes to Blondes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Remember that yes. restaurant? But I mean, you always seem to me to be terribly agreeable and peaceful and never trying to make any trouble. And I, you, you, you're very anti the press because they've treated you badly. I suppose, because I'm a journalist myself, I'd like to say it's just one kind, one part of the press, isn't it? It's a sort of a gutter press, it's a oh, yeah, sensationalist yeah, yeah. press. Mm -hmm. And have you any idea why they went after you, George? I mean, you know... I don't know, I, I've always believed that, uh, as you say, maybe, I mean, I, I've, I've got some friends in the press. I mean, I, I talk about them in a bad way. And as you say, we're talking about the gutter press, what, what I call the gutter press. 
Uh, I have some very close friends who I respect and I can say things to them that will never ever be printed. Uh, but there are the, the ones who, when I lived in America, uh, the press in America actually build up superstars uh, and they want to keep them there as long as possible. In this country, they do the opposite. They, wanna, they build them up and they want to knock them off as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. Because when they finish with them, they want to get rid of them, which is terrible. It's like, you know, when a horse has finished the race or broken his leg, they want to shoot him. So they send him out to stud, which is a nice way of doing it, isn't it? Uh, and, but they don't do it here, which is a shame to me. I, lo I love going to America because I see great athletes still making money 20, 25 years after they've finished playing. And when you say here, you mean really more in Britain? Yeah, yeah. Britain, yeah. yes, he's talking yeah. about that. But they were after you today, I mean, in the hotel where, where you hadn't yet turned up, mm. but there was already things about the, about the quarter bottle of champagne which was going to be in your room or was not going to be in your room and ended up in our room. And the press around the hotel... <laughs> <laughs> well, that's where it went. Well, yeah, well, exactly. Well, you, you, well, you owe me one. You, you're right, all right. Um, and a bottle of champagne as well. <laughs> yeah, <thank you>. um, <laughs> George, sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Well, I mean, I think he's just beautiful. Um, I think, um, I mean, when you look at that, to give pleasure and that sort of skill to so many people, it doesn't sort of matter if it's in the past, it's what is, still there. What is your reaction, both of you, when I say that in his book he tells, he tells of, of how he had seven women in one 24-hour period? Well, then, I mean... They told lies it was eight. <laughs> What, what's your reaction? Say, what? They didn't mind, and he doesn't mind. Then good. <laughs> so, Maeve, what's your well, reaction? I would agree if it was a free country. I mean, if they weren't all there against their will, screaming to get out. I mean, that's... That, that's uh, and, they, and they come back home and say, you know, I had two or three pets. I mean, that's fame forever and ever and ever and ever, isn't it? I mean, you know, we're not talking about the, the, the taste or the, or, the, or the sort of the elegance of describing such a thing. We're talking about the fact of it. Yes. And the fact of it is if everybody was there on their own free will and enjoying themselves, I think that's perfectly all right. How wonderfully liberal you are, Mabel. <laughs> your, your mother and father would say things to you if they were around here tonight, I, I can tell you that. Did you really buy six E-type Jags for cash? Yes, I did. One yeah. at a time, I mean. One at a time, yeah, I yeah. did. I wish I'd have kept them. I wish yeah, I'd have kept them yeah. too. Yeah. Now, but it, it, it's like we're saying, it, it amazes me that the, the stuff they write about, I was doing normal things in those days. I liked cars, I liked women. I know, if, if I was, <laughs> I would get less publicity if I slept with men. You see, I think, I think, I think if his name was, I think if his name was worst, not best, you know, he wouldn't have all this trouble. I think it's just a good to go. I never thought of that. I never thought of that. You but you see, what, what he, you, you certainly have enjoyed the most extraordinarily successful life. And then on the other hand, you tell in the book how you stole money from a woman on the beach in, where was it? Marbella, was it? I can't remember. I stole it from... Somewhere, wherever. Uh, I did, yeah. I... Uh, I mean, I've had periods where I've been really, really down uh, through drink, and I needed a drink, and sometimes I didn't have money in my pocket, so I stole it to get a drink. And you, you stole it from this woman on the beach and from her handbag? Yeah, I took it from her handbag in a bar uh, to, to buy myself a drink, because I, I couldn't afford one, uh, uh, which is, I suppose, maybe not rock bottom, but as close as you can get. And, and did you go back to her as a... Oh, I went back and... Did I you really? Yeah, yeah, did you really? Yeah. I'm, yeah. A, I'm a good honest man, really. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I, I would imagine that you probably did go back to her. I would have assumed that you did go back to her and find her and give, give her back the money. And, um, yes, sir, did you want to say something? Yes, up at the second last row there, uh, Dad. Sorry. Could I ask George, uh, yeah. were you a selfish player when you played? Were you selfish? Uh, yeah. That's why I have friends of my own... Most of my friends in football uh, play golf. My, players I've played with play golf and I've always said to him the reason I never took up golf because I didn't like partying with a ball <laughs> and Thank you. yes I, yeah. I was very very selfish but I went to a, a, a boxing dinner the other night and uh, uh, Paddy Craner was there who's an old friend of mine and you all know him he's he's the only Scotsman I know that travels with an Irish passport <laughs> and he uh, he told a lovely story about uh, Dennis Law and Bobby Charlton waiting for a pass and they're all screaming and shouting at me and they're all, you know, swearing and doing this and that. And all of a sudden, Bobby's gone, you greedy little Irish, what a great goal. 